Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Friday, August the 23rd, 2024. I want to just say something quickly about Mike Lynch, the entrepreneur who was killed in that water spout off the Sicilian coast. I'm not going to look at the charts again, but it's kind of interesting, isn't it, that he went on a victory trip. So he had just been acquitted in the United States of, um, I don't know, various financial crimes relating to the sale of his company Autonomy. And he, I think Hewlett Packard bought it and they were unhappy with the price. And uh, people say that Mike, Michael Lynch, Mike Lynch was a very nice, talented person. But at the same time, going on a, a victory trip, you know, that was what, was what it was, why he was on this yacht. A victory trip to celebrate this victory in America, this legal victory. And there is something slightly hubristic about it. You know, there's hubris and then, of course, there's nemesis. And it, if, if you, I suppose it reminds us that we should not uh, celebrate our victories in, in all cases, particularly if there's another side to the argument. It's just asking for trouble when we celebrate something like that. We just perhaps need to be a little bit modest and we certainly shouldn't be celebrating things in grand style like being on a super super yacht in the mediterranean over the summer surrounded by rich people that does seem to be asking for trouble and there's another thing that's interesting is the name of this yacht the the bayesian and so bayesianism is an approach to statistics it's saying that you don't just look at the raw probabilities you actually have to look at the background, the overall situation in which in which something is taking place. So, for example, let's say you had a test for Ebola. Let's say you could buy in the chemist a test for Ebola, and you know that near fatal disease that sort of comes out of Africa. You know, let's just let's just say, for the sake of argument, you had a test for Ebola, and it's highly contagious, and you'd look on the instructions of the test before taking it and it would give a false positive rate and a false negative rate. So, you know, you, perhaps you're living in rural America or in a village in England and you have been sort of keeping a, keeping yourself to yourself, perhaps meeting the locals, but you, you get hold of this Ebola test. And so you, you, you test yourself for Ebola and uh, you find... Uh, you get you get a uh, you get a positive and you you tested positive for Ebola, so you would obviously in the first instance you would have a complete panic, wouldn't you? That you've just caught Ebola, but you know there is that false positive rate, and you say, well, there's a false positive rate of say five percent. So you might at first be thinking that you've got a you know, that there is a 95% chance of you having Ebola. But that's not exactly true if you take the Bayesian approach. A Bayesian approach would indicate that you also have to consider how many people have Ebola in your, in your community, in your, in your village. So uh, if absolutely zero people have Ebola around you and it's a contagious disease, then chances are you haven't got Ebola. I suppose there's always some possibility that someone had just come back from Africa and then you might be able to come up with some someone you met who's come back from Africa recently and there might be some actually very, very small probability that you would have Ebola. But from a Bayesian approach, you you would say that you had no probability of having Ebola. So in terms of the lake, sorry, in terms of the boat, you could think, well, this is a super yacht. It's built to withstand... Um, hurricanes and everything else you know what can go wrong and so you might think even if there are hurricanes that your chances of dying on the super yacht would be zero but 
That might actually be a frequentist approach. So a frequentist approach is when you just look at the raw probability. So there's a frequentist approach versus a Bayesian approach. But perhaps if you took a Bayesian approach, you'd have to look at what else is going on. Of course, Mike Lynch doesn't believe in, uh, I assume, or didn't believe in um, sort of weird stuff like, um, I don't know, things being connected. Um, perhaps uh, one event asynchronously suggesting another event. But perhaps if he'd taken a Bayesian approach and he'd sort of had a, an interconnected view, he might have noticed that his associate, who'd, someone else who'd been acquitted at that trial in America, Stephen Chamberlain, two days earlier, had been killed in a car, cra a car accident. And... He might have also then noticed, hold on, he's been killed in a car accident. I'm planning on doing this, this victory trip, which is very hubristic. So given those two events, it may actually be that the probability of this accident happening is actually higher than expected. Of course, I'm looking at things from a sort of a fate karma astrology perspective. And of course, from a scientific point of view, that is, of course, nonsense. But I just thought that was interesting the way uh, it, there was this hubris. He, he had partner, his partner was killed two days earlier and he called it the victory trip. I, I don't know. I think and I think that the Bayesian thing and of course, if you're talking about Bayesian stuff, you've also got to consider the probability of a, a black swan event, a black swan of event being an event you, you you cannot deal with in a probabilistic way. So normally things have probabilities, and you can form you know you can form distributions of probabilities and all this kind of thing. But a black a black swan event is on the tail. You can't on the tail of the graph, and you can't really account for it. So I thought I'd uh, mention that. But what I actually wanted to talk about in terms of my main topic today is a square aspect between Venus and Mars. So yesterday we got an exact Venus-Mars square, Venus in Virgo, Mars in, um, Mars in Gemini. And we get this aspect again. It continues, whether it was exact yesterday or today, it does depend on your time zone, but we are dealing with an exact Venus-Mars square. So what I'm going to do in this uh, video, I mean, I'm, my main topic is to look at what uh, the Venus-Mars square means. It's a square that has a lot to do with how we relate to other people, it has, can have something to do with sexuality and charisma or lack of charisma, perhaps. And yes, that, that is what I'm going to look at. But uh, before I do that, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for today, which is Friday, August the 23rd, 2024. And yeah, just a reminder that if you are... Um, not subscribed to this video and you enjoy this video i would really be very grateful if you were to su subscribe i don't think it costs you anything but it does make a big difference to the channel i know i repeat this every video but the point remains the same also if you like the video of course i'd be really really happy if you were to like it apparently subscriptions and likes they do yeah they really do matter or so i'm told Okay, so let's uh, look at the astrology and the I Ching for today. So here is the chart for today. As far as who the people are, I've got a few people who have Venus Mars squares. We've got uh, occultist Alistair Crowley has a Venus Mars square, uh, or had a Venus Mars square. He died in the 1940s. Um, Hillary Clinton has a Venus Mars square. Former United Nations weapons inspector Scott Ritter has a Venus Mars square. And so does uh, vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance. So I'll be talking about those four and more later in the video. So let's, uh, uh, let's start with today. So here's the position today. Basically, the moon is in Aries pretty much in Aries for all of the day. 
kind of depends to an extent where you are. Moon is conjunct Charon in uh, Aries and it's trine Mercury. So Moon in Aries, I think many of us may feel that there is something that needs to be done, that we have to be active. We have to be prepared to take the initiative. Uh, we shouldn't necessarily leave it to other people to do everything. We need to do things in our own way, off our own bat, and not always be looking for support and confirmation. Sometimes we just, we're in a situation where we just have to act. We don't have a choice. Of course, I, that is not an encouragement to be reckless or stupid. We do have to give some consideration to the situation. But, you know, with Moon trine Mercury conjunct Charon, that might be about standing up for something. Moon Charon is about wounds, the wounded healer. Maybe we have to be the wounded healer and heal someone else, take the initiative to heal someone else. Uh, or Charon can also be about wanting to do things differently. So, well, certainly we shouldn't be afraid of standing out. Sometimes we do have to stand out and getting attention. And uh, so we get attention and uh, we may get some criticism, but sometimes it just has to be done. And with Moon Trine Mercury, uh, okay, Mercury might be retrograde and Mercury retrograde does indicate that we should be careful perhaps about what we say but at the same time with moon trine mercury just it is the case that some things really do have to be said and the moon is not just trine mercury the moon is sextile mars and it's sextile jupiter and so the moon is uh, quite strongly configured um, you know so you know yesterday the moon was a little bit out on its own wasn't really aspecting anything now it's aspecting a lot it is aspecting mercury mars and um, Mercury, Mars, and Jupiter, and so it could, it should be a more active day than yesterday. We also have, of course, that Venus square Mars, and Venus square Mars is about how we how we express ourselves. It's about our charisma. Um, I think that. In some places, we're going to be very attractive and people are going to be very interested in what we have to say. And they just might just be attracted to our personality and our charm and our good looks, whatever. But in other places, we may make no impact. We might even make a negative impact. Venus is square Mars. Attraction and repulsion, are, I suppose, are very much part of this Venus square Mars thing. And, you know... What's attractive to one person may be repulsive to another. And so we shouldn't make assumptions that you know everyone likes us, that everyone finds us attractive. Some people do find us attractive, other people don't. And you know, we also have this clash between you know Venus in Virgo, Mars in Gemini. Venus in Virgo likes to do things properly. Mars in Mars in Mars in Gemini perhaps likes to talk its head off. So that the two things are clashing and the things we say, yes, we've got a lot to say, but we can't, we won't necessarily um, have the same impact on all people. All people, different people may, may respond to us in different ways. And another aspect we've got is Mercury semi-sextile Venus. Minor aspect, Mercury semi-sextile Venus. But uh, it suggests a certain friction between Venus and Mercury. Uh, you know, there's Mercury in Leo, so it kind of wants attention, uh, wants to speak in big words, big gestures. And then it's semi-sextile Venus, and Venus is um, you know, does like to do things properly. But at the same time, we do have something to say. And perhaps if we want to get people's attention, we have to use the right language. And it's particularly important if we're trying to convince someone for example about how clever we are uh, we do have to use the right language because we are clever we've got some nice ideas and you know we we've, we've got real creativity and it's important that people appreciate it but how are we going to wrap our creativity Cre creativity has to be wrapped in the right way if, if people like the overall package then they'll they'll then they'll accept us they'll accept our genius but if we 
package it in a sloppy way or we use kind of um, upsetting package with wrong wrapping paper, then that would be a shame, wouldn't it? As far as the heliocentric picture is concerned, I'm not sure if anything is going on. Uh, so let's uh, let's look at look at things with the Earth at the center of the with the Earth at the center. Sorry, the Sun at the center of the solar system, and. I suppose the main thing to notice with this heliocentric chart is Venus, Venus quincunx Uranus. So with Venus quincunx, oh, there's another thing. Oh, we've got Venus quincunx Uranus and we've got Saturn conjunct Mercury. So Venus quincunx Uranus, possibly about relationships. Quincunx Uranus, a little bit of instability in terms of relationships. And uh, the way we, we the way we exp we come over, the way we present ourselves, may be a bit discordant, and perhaps that sort of chimes also with with this Venus Mars square. Uh, there can be a discordancy with that Venus Mars square. We don't always come over in the right way, and there might be just something about us that perhaps is a little bit alarming, or perhaps we're going to find other people alarming in the way they present themselves. And there's also Mercury conjunct Saturn. Mercury conjunct Saturn in Pisces. Remember, this is a heliocentric aspect from the sun's from point of view when the sun is at the center of the solar system. And so Mercury conjunct Saturn, maybe just a feeling that things are coming down to earth. The collective is feeling a little bit down uh, a feeling that uh, perhaps the best times are over, maybe. It's that sort of feeling. And in fact, you could almost say that this Mercury, this Mercury-Saturn conjunction is sort of on a midpoint between the Earth and Neptune. I think it sort of is, actually. So Earth, Neptune, you know, the uncertainties down here on Earth. People are worried about things. I mean, I know that you know we just escaped supposedly this full moon square Uranus. You know, we had this big, you know, big activity uh, at the beginning of a week, and nothing much seems to happen. I know a few things happen, but uh, nothing overly dramatic. But Mercury conjunct Saturn may be just a feeling of, huh, this isn't working out, and this general sense of sort of negativity creeping in with with this with this conjunction and yeah in it in the fact that it's on the earth op, conjunct the earth neptune midpoint so maybe that mercury saturn conjunction is important and it's just telling us about the the overall mood uh People might have been optimistic, but now people are becoming less optimistic. And we just may notice that, um, you know, out there sort of in society and so forth. Now, one thing I should perhaps point out, just I had a thought just now, you know, I, I, going back to Monday, I was thinking a lot about, you know, there, was a, there were a load of geocentric aspects on Monday and really nothing much happened. And... You know, it, in a way, it was disappointing. In a way, it was a bit of a relief. I mean, the markets went up. There were no disasters. The Middle East was relatively calm. But I also noticed on Monday that there wasn't much going on heliocentrically. And perhaps if one is trying to sort of make forecasts about what is happening in the world, one actually needs to look at the heliocentric picture as well. And it is true that that astro many astrologers, or I don't know, I wouldn't say many, that's probably an exaggeration, but some astrologers who look at uh, political astrology or economic stock market astrology, they do use heliocentric astrology, and heliocentric, heliocentric aspects can matter, perhaps because they're talking about the overall mood. And yes, we do have a conjunction between Mercury and Saturn, which does put a damper on things, I think.
Okay, so now I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for, um, sorry, I want to look at the astrology for the 12 signs. And I'm now going to go through the 12 signs uh, for today, which is Friday, August the 23rd, 2024. Aries, things are really starting to move for you, Aries. The moon is uh, moving through your sign. It was moving through your sign yesterday, but like yesterday, the moon wasn't really applying to anything. It might have felt that you were all dressed up with nowhere to go because it just wasn't anywhere to put your energy for, you know, not, nowhere to really apply yourself. But things are changing. The moon is making a, well, it's making a sextile to Jupiter, the beginning of the day. And if you're in Australia or New Zealand, the moon is making a sextile to Mars. And now, you know, it's making a trine to, a trine to Mercury, sorry, yeah, trying to Mercury in a conjunction to Charon. So there are plenty of things to apply yourself to. And you don't have to hesitate in most cases. Of course, if you're doing, think, contemplating something stupid or dangerous, that's a different matter. But, you know, if in doubt, it's probably a time to take, take action, to take the initiative. I think that's, uh, that's what the universe expects of you. You know, something has to start, something has to begin. And you can't expect another person to create the, to create the start, start, another person to get the ball rolling. No, it, it's, it's down to you. And I think, Aries, it's a time when you can certainly get attention and people will listen to you and I think people will follow you. And the things you say can really help move things on. You know, some people might be stuck. They're not quite sure what to do. They kind of know, but they don't know. And then you come along and you state the obvious. Aries is very good at stating the obvious. You tell people as it is. You say, look, it is like this. And people uh, just listen to you. And they know you're right. And you tell them what to do. And again, they know you're right. And I think in most cases, they will follow your lead. And, you know, the verbal side of, of the moon in Aries shouldn't be forgotten because, you know, the moon is in Aries, sextile Mars and Jupiter. And remember, Mars, your ruler is in Gemini. So you do have a lot to say. And you can say things in a way that is perhaps abrupt, but it's certainly exciting and so there's no real no real problems there getting attention but it can't be denied that uh venus is square mars so this venus square mars i've been talking about it for the last few days venus is the planet of relationships it's square mars your ruler this aspect is a little bit uneasy and it does indicate to me that some people could find you disturbing. You know, people have their way of doing things. They've got their nice little lives. And then you come along and you say something that they're not expecting or you do something they weren't expecting. And that just spoils everything. And you then get a, potentially a negative or a hostile reaction. Or maybe not. Maybe people are disturbed, but then after with after some some sort of thought on the matter, they they realise you're right. You certainly shouldn't be afraid of upsetting people today, uh, because sometimes it just has to be done. And you know, if you if you're always concerned with making people happy, well, probably you're going to get nowhere. Okay, now if you're dealing with close relationships with this Venus square Mars, that might be a different matter. I think you may have to tread with a, a bit more a bit uh, more cautiously. I mean, if you're dealing with someone you have to deal with all the time, you don't want them to run away. I mean, they are part of your life, perhaps. And so in that case, perhaps be careful what they say. Try to understand their limits and and just try to understand the way they are 
organizing and scheduling their life do you really want to upset those schedules because if you were to upset their schedules then uh, that could be uh, that could be a problem and you might get a, a really a, a seriously negative reaction so yes in certain cases you perhaps have to be careful but overall Aries I think it's a day when you really do have to be be yourself be an Aries and that's that is what is expected of you Taurus Taurus like yesterday you possibly want to uh, hold back a little uh, you, you there are things that you want to keep to yourself you feel they don't need to be discussed and uh, you want to reveal things at the very least on your terms and so perhaps it's right that you keep secret some things do have to be kept secret though still you may be in a situation where you really re where you really want to keep a secret you know it's important to keep a secret and keeping a secret can be about you know your opinions not just secret information you really want to but somehow it sort of slips out just by by mistake something stirs you something um concerns you upsets you makes you annoyed and then you say something and then later on you you regret it so if you are going to if you make a decision at the beginning of the day that you need to keep something secret then make sure you keep it secret and that's that way you kind of won't get yourself into trouble but in certain situations what secret has to be revealed and in terms for example about dealing with people you really know and trust like your family um, very close friends it may be actually be a time for talking about things that have been hidden for i don't know weeks months years decades whatever whatever's appropriate something that has been hidden perhaps does need to be brought out into the open and needs to be discussed but you have to make absolutely clear you have to be very clear with yourself who you are talking to not everyone can be trusted and it's certainly not a not a good day for te telling secrets to sort of acquaintances or worse still strangers um, yeah it might feel like a nice thing to do to unload your concerns onto a stranger but it's probably not a good idea so a certain amount of discretion there I think could be very important and you know in many ways Taurus you'll probably do your best work and your most intense and constructive work when you are slightly removed from the rest of the world you know when you're slightly removed um, you you'll be able to concentrate and you'll have a sense uh a sense of your own freedom and also i suppose your own power now there is an aspect that does need to be considered and that is a square aspect between venus and mars you know this aspect between venus and mars has been building up for a couple of days i've been talking about it for a couple of days but now it is exact venus is your venus is your ruler and it is very much about who you are and where you where you are right now you know venus is in virgo it's it's in actually a very creative part of your chart venus in virgo and so maybe some taurians are just in the process of just trying to to work out what they can do and doing something you enjoy and perhaps putting a lot of effort into doing something you enjoy that, that's really special to you yet with venus square mars you may not always get the appreciation you feel you deserve you know you expect to, to be respected you expect people to say well you're doing that you know that's great for you but today you may not get that respect 
and you might be a little bit upset by people's reactions to you or some people's reaction to you, especially when it comes to things that are important to you, you know, what you're involved in. You tell someone else what you're involved in, what's important to you, and you get a reaction which is less than positive. So that perhaps goes back to what I was talking about in terms of secrecy. If you're doing something that's really important to you, particularly if you're just starting it, you know, those first shoots are a bit delicate and it really, really is important to you, then don't talk about it to every anyone or everyone because you won't always get a favourable response. And it's better to just perhaps just keep going uh, in your own way, at your own pace, and you know don't feel that uh, you have to sort of allow other people to um, be part of your life people don't have to be part of your life if they don't appreciate your life i mean that i think is is very important and also this venus mars square it just might have an impact on relationships in general i think with this venus mars square you know, there is definitely a connection between you and another person. But is it a tense connection? Is it an easy connection? And it may be that even with people you know very well, you're very close to, the the dis-ease might come to the surface. The way in which you and someone else don't get on the the ways in which you clash may become very apparent and it's possible that one area of disagreement might be money uh, so if you're close to someone possibly you should avoid talking about money and material stuff because it's just going to be an irritation although i suppose it is possible that you might be told something about money that you don't want to hear, but you probably possibly should hear. So if you if you hear news about money and you don't like it and you start responding badly, then uh, perhaps you should ask yourself a few questions. You should ask yourself whether it's actually right that you respond in this kind of negative way maybe you're being told something important something that uh, you actually need to need to take on board and and i think that that's also generally true about how you respond to information information is coming your way and not all the information coming your way is going to be to your liking but today it's very important that you don't shoot the messenger Gemini. Gemini, you are quite uh, gregarious and sociable today. I think that uh, you have, I suppose, quite a lot. To, you have quite a lot to say. And let me just turn my phone off. We don't want that happening again, do we? Uh, yeah, you have quite a lot to say. And we don't want to be disturbed, do we? Uh, there we are. There you go. No more disturbances there. I'm a Gemini. I'm allowed to be disturbed and I'm allowed to turn my phone off when I'm talking to Geminis. As a Gemini, I'm sure you understand that. So, so Gemini, you do... You, you do find today that you are quite sociable and because you're sociable you you know you should you should take advantage of that you know you you are an exciting person and people are going to want to know you and as soon as you start to really um, talk and assert yourself people are just going to find you you know increasingly interesting and even though Mercury is re retrograde, you are going to have a lot to say for yourself. You know, after all, Moon is trine Mercury. Mercury is your ruler. And so once you start talking, it's going to be difficult to stop. And 
Moon is also sextile Mars, so you're able to... Mars is in Gemini, of course, so you're able to communicate with with considerable force and conviction. And, you know, overall, Gemini, I think you're going to be really quite an interesting person, at, at least on a superficial level. Now, if you're trying to have, you know, a very serious conversation with someone if you're trying to talk to someone about something that is really important to you something something that does matter then the situation might be slightly different because there is this semi-sextile between mercury and venus so mercury or mercury which is your ruler is 30 degrees away from venus and so there's a certain tension there in terms of close one-to-one relationships it just feels that the the closer you get to someone the more difficult it is and it's not that you should regard it as a just a complete roadblock something that's just going to you know that something is going to grind to a halt it requires i think a bit of subtlety on your part so if you're dealing with, if you're talking to someone about important subjects, be subtle. Um, try to understand who you're talking about, talking about, talking to, and I think it's going to be particularly important that you make the other person feel comfortable. That's your first priority, and it's not. There's only, there's not one way of making someone feel comfortable. You have to understand who someone is, you know, what what makes them tick and what it takes to reassure them. And that's what you should be focusing on. And once you've made someone comfortable, and once they start relaxing, only then can you really start to talk about the things that matter the things that are that are of major concern to you. So it's a little bit difficult, but you can do it. I think that you do have at the moment sufficient sensitivity to be able to make an, make an impression. And, you know, we shouldn't also forget that Mars is square Venus and Venus square Mars, you know, or Venus is square Mars. And I think that Venus square Mars sort of gives us the same message you know, people have a comfort zone and it's just so easy with Mars in Gemini for you to wreck that comfort zone or to threaten that comfort zone. Uh, you maybe just blurt things out or you say the wrong thing at the wrong time. It is absolutely possible. And I think that's just more relevant as you get closer to someone. I think broad socialising, you're completely in your element but as it starts to focus down to one person to more serious a more serious subject matter i think that things uh, things do start becoming a little more difficult and uh, you have to start to become yeah more subtle and more clever so uh that's by and large what's what's happening today just a reminder gemini that uh, jupiter is still square saturn and yeah, the Jupiter square Saturn was exact on Monday, but it's still there. And I do think that Jupiter square Saturn is important for you, Gemini. Uh, you, you're very much in tune at the moment with what is happening in the world and how what's happening in the world can impact your finances and your business and all of that. And you're you're very aware of that, and. I think that this awareness um, could relate to, I don't know, could, to how you handle your money, your business, career, your work. You do have a sense for the connectedness of it all. And you understand that things are not easy, that we do live in difficult times. But I think that you're able to understand at the moment how what's going on in these difficult times, not just how it affects you, but perhaps how you can actually benefit from it all. Cancer. There is a lot of action today, um, a lot of um, 
a lot of connections and uh, things are coming together things are moving and cancer i think that you're getting a lot of attention and um, i think a great deal of attention at the moment and people do people are listening to what you say and they they understand what you say and so cancer do take advantage of it it's it's really not a time for be for shining your light under a bushel and you know for example you know there's moon moon trine mercury moon is your ruler it's trine mercury and so that means cancer that you're able to talk about important matters perhaps you're able to talk about matters which you know other people are perhaps not interested in but you know it's important it perhaps relates to you know fundamental issues like money and security and you know things that we need to stay stay afloat to stay solvent if something needs to be discussed you'll be able to discuss it but it's not just important matters i think you can talk about most things you will just have a natural fluency today which i think people are going to to really appreciate and also subtlety subtlety in the sense that you can bring up difficult subjects you know i was just talking to gemini and i was perhaps suggesting that gemini might find it difficult to deal with difficult subjects or has to or serious subject matter but for you not a problem uh, all things being equal cancerians are more sensitive than gemini's so you can deal with things which other people may not be able to manage and in some respects you may be the the sort of the mouth being able to talk about things that yeah that other people don't want to talk about and you can do it and i don't think that you need to be too worried about the consequences because i think you i think you basically know what you're doing and you do understand that things do have to be pushed a little bit you can't totally respect people's comfort all the time sometimes you just have to push things and you shouldn't be afraid of getting attention indeed being the center of attention it's a natural place for you at the moment it might not feel like that but it is a natural place and it's because i suppose you've got your finger on the pulse and you know what has to be moved forward so that means you know and that means today that uh, you know you perhaps have a certain responsibility to um, create things to get other people moving um, you know if you see someone who's not doing something you want to do then don't feel that you just necessarily have to leave them to their own devices you can um, you can intervene and you can make suggestions and i do think that in many cases that your your suggestions will be listened to uh, so yeah it's important cancer that you don't underestimate yourself and in general i think cancer you're going to be luckier than average and your the, your good luck can work out work its way through in in many different ways and so um i think overall it looks like uh, a good day when i think you can be the center of attention and i think you can actually enjoy being the center of attention you certainly shouldn't be worried about it because uh, i think today yeah you're a natural and so yeah make the most of it leo leo you are i think in quite a positive frame of mind it does feel that things are uh, that things are really starting to flow um you know perhaps recently there have been times when things have been just a little bit stuck but uh now things are starting to move and you're 
perhaps beginning to sort of enjoy this movement and you know there's enough fire to keep you going you know we've got the moon in aries we've got uh moon in aries making a trine to mercury in leo and so while it's true that the sun has left leo it's out of your sign it's it, it's in virgo mercury is still in leo and it will be in leo for some time and so with moon trine mercury you may feel that uh you've got your fire back and you're able to understand what's happening around you intuitively and you're able to make connections and you're just going to be enthusiastic and people will appreciate your enthusiasm and you know that always matters so um find out who your fans and supporters are they're out there and see what you know see what you've got to offer see what they've got to offer because you know it's a time it is a time for making connections and the connections you know should work very well though you know you can't expect everything though to be just sunny and bright and happy uh, you know if you if you do meet meet people if you if you think that's important today there are going to be people who you meet who may be hiding something uh and you may just get a feeling that someone is not quite who they claim to be now i'm not trying to make you paranoid here and i'm just suggesting that there might be a snake in paradise is that right something like that you know it's a nice day it is i don't want to take away from that take 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 anything away from that but things are flowing it's really nice that the moon is in aries it's trine mercury but there's just something that you might notice that doesn't sound right doesn't feel right maybe I said it may be another person it may be a group of people it may be a particular situation and you look at it and you feel that something is wrong now on the surface nothing is wrong but you feel something is wrong and i think it's a time when you need to trust your feelings on this on this matter and it may also be a situation where in some ways your own your own darkness your own capacity for doing bad things we all have a capacity for doing bad things all of us uh, so i'm not singling you out there but but your own capacity for doing bad things may be may find a resonance somewhere uh, and you find it strangely appealing and it's so tempting to go close go get up close but really this is something that is the, should be the reserve of your fantasies and your imagination or perhaps of the distant past it's not something that should be brought into the real here and now no uh, so be on aware be aware of that just be aware that there are snakes in paradise and uh you need to look out for those snakes and as soon as you see one of those snakes in paradise then it's very important leo that you do back off but you know again i really must make it clear I don't want to make you paranoid i'm just i'm just suggesting something that you do need to just watch out for a little bit but uh you know this shouldn't take away from the fact that today is very um expansive and it's a day for gathering new knowledge and also with moon conjunct charon you may find an opportunity to be of assistance to someone or a group of people who are a long way away and it may be i don't know the person another person at the end of a phone of a, of a telephone the other side of the world that's possible it could be i don't know it might be a, a charitable cause 
on another part another part of the world it could be but whatever it is i think you're going to be aware that uh, someone a long way away from you is in trouble or perhaps needs help in some way i mean not in anything in any sort of major way but it's sort of help but i suppose you could donate i i suppose that's one approach giving money to a charitable cause obviously not too much money or it could just be listening to someone on an, you know if you have global connections then yeah some listening to someone who is a long way away you can in some way um some way help them and i suppose with the moon caron conjunction also there may be a slight temptation there i don't know temptation is probably the wrong word but a slight inclination to do things that are different perhaps you feel that something is missing and you've perhaps been um focusing on particular views of the world that have become a little boring and you might perhaps you want to start to play with a different idea different philosophy different religion something like that which might be a little bit weird but you might find it interesting of course bear in mind what i said also about avoiding people who are um who are hiding some dark secret so certainly not a day for joining a cult and cults can take many shapes and forms of course it's very unlikely that uh, you've got a neighborhood cult but if there is happens to be a neighborhood next door cult i would uh, stay away from it but uh, if there if there is anything that's slightly cultish and slightly unusual and exotic you might at some level be quite attracted to it and probably you should uh, in that case um, hold off but uh, it is an interesting day virgo well i hope you're enjoying the sun's continued movement through virgo uh, virgo uh with the sun moving through virgo it's still conjunct regulus the royal star and so with uh with the sun conjunct regulus the royal star i mean it's it's moving away from regulus now but you should still be feeling it and so that should give you a, a certain sense of your own power and a, a sense of your own importance and you know what virgos sometimes need a sense of their own importance because you know virgo can be quite a modest sign um you know you don't want to attract too much attention to yourself and you you don't want to boast but uh having a sense of important of your own importance can be extremely useful um it can uh um it can it can just allow you to it can give you the confidence to move to 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 the next level so having a sense of importance just for the sake of it is of no real value and you're a virgo you know that you understand that things should have a purpose and so you have a sense of importance because it gives you the confidence to move on and to to develop and to be able to get involved in new areas to be able to impress people not because they need to be impressed just for the sake of it but you could say so you can impress people so they can help you so that's that's the way to the way to to work it and in terms of other people i think that at the moment you're going to be quite uh, compelling in your own way you know intrinsically you perhaps feel that you do not really want to involve yourself with serious interpersonal issues but at the moment you have a considerable amount of insight and this insight can sort of guide the way you communicate and it, it can perhaps guide your decisions about who you want to talk to what you want to talk about how to broach difficult subjects this will all guide you and i think that uh, you can 
you can really do a good job. So, yes, you you can you can meet with the right people, and your sense of importance will be clear. But it's all it's all very subtle. You don't have to be in people's face faces. It's not it's not like that. You just have to um, um, just understand what's necessary in order to you know, achieve a particular goal. And talking about goals, there is a square between Venus and Mars today. You know, Venus and Mars square, it can be a little bit of a problem in some ways. It's it, uh, it can reveal people's rough edges. It can perhaps reveal your rough edges. Um, as people try to get on, you know, it's not entirely easy because, you know, Venus is square Mars and uh, so Mars can be aggravating. But this Venus square Mars, if you can get through the aggravation and, of course, use your use your sensitivity, a sensitivity, of course, is always very important. You can really start to start to focus on a set of targets, whatever these targets are, because Virgo, right now you are ambitious and you've been ambitious for quite a few months. And I think this, this Venus square Mars does really start to focus on what you want and what you don't want. And I think you'll be able to make this very clear. And again, it's all back to your sense of importance. You You are treated as being important. And if you make it very clear that there are things that you want and you're able to use your your charisma then i think that people will take you seriously you can't expect though to have a favorable impact on everyone some people will find you abrasive you know especially when it comes to things like career or business or i don't know um, trying to achieve concrete goals out there in the real world yeah there will be something a little bit abrasive about you but i don't think that can be helped and as i've sort of suggested earlier on when i was talking about your when i'm talking about your sign you're able to understand things you're able to understand things right now at an emotional level and because of that that just may give you enough sensitivity to get round uh, to get round any problems yes if you really really want something and you want it now there's always a co- that always a possibility that you upset someone but uh, if you really try and you really focus on on understanding what's happening emotionally I, I think that you will be able to make make your presence felt in, in, and in such a way that you, by and large, g- do get what you want. Libra. Libra, it's a day when I think other people do matter. I mean, I know that in the Libran life, if you follow the textbooks, other people always matter to some extent. I mean, Libra is all about the balance, isn't it? You have to balance what you want with uh, what other people want and so it, you always feel perhaps that you have to behave in such a way that uh, it doesn't uh, upset the apple cart I mean it doesn't have to always be the case there are some Librans who of course they understand the subtle balance around them and they go out of their way to cause maximum maximum chaos and they actually enjoy causing trouble and that's not most Librans but there are a few Librans Um, for example Alistair Crowley who I'll be talking about a bit later in this video he was a Libran he was not someone who just wanted to fit in and make everyone happy he liked causing trouble and uh, so it's not every Libran, but I think most Librans. And so the the social situation and the people around you and how you relate to these people, it, it all matters. 
and I think that you uh, are under, have a good understanding of how to behave, how not to behave, and you are giving people um, a certain amount of respect. I think you, I think you understand that, and and I think that is important uh, because without other people's support, uh, then there may be limits to what you can do, at least at the moment. But of course, that doesn't mean to say that you have to completely do things other people's way. It's all about just understanding where the limits are. Where, where, where are the parts of your life where you can be independent? Where are they? And where are the parts of your life when you when you are more dependent and where are the parts of your life when, where you are totally dependent. So perhaps you have to make some distinctions there. And it does seem, though, that by and large you can benefit from other people. I, I mean, the moon, you know, while moving through Aries, which is your opposite sign, is making a sextile to Jupiter. It's also making a trine to Mercury. And so perhaps you can get inspiration from people so, you know sometimes you, you might be thinking too much you might be not quite sure what to do you maybe feel that things aren't particularly exciting and then there is a blast of uh, blast of energy coming from another person coming from the outside world and you can feel it and you can immediately react to it and uh, then um, you can really start to sort of enjoy yourself uh, in, in a big way. So, you know, that is the positive side of what's, what's happening today. And at the same time, you will have a certain sense that something is guiding you. It's not going to be just completely random, a feeling that perhaps some higher force, higher power, maybe your higher consciousness whatever is guiding you and that perhaps you can trust this guiding force yet venus is square mars venus was square mars yesterday it's square mars today and so with venus square mars you you may feel um that something is clashing you'd like everything to be harmonious but you can feel the clash and it's like at some level you just like to do things your way in your own way and at the moment you have a clear sense of how you would like to organize your life and configure your life and it, it's it's a bit difficult but you do understand the order in which you'd like things to be yet there are external forces which seem to be disruptive and that external force may represent another person it could be sort of a partner someone you're in a relationship with um they are um they're asserting themselves they're pushing in a particular direction and you don't entirely like the direction they're pushing you in and you have to think it through are they just are they being completely unreasonable that is possible are they being obnoxious for no for no gain that is also possible but it's also possible that you're being given insights into something new insights that you don't like told to, that you can perhaps do things in a different way you don't want to do things in a different way but maybe you're just a little bit too set in your ways and just because you're annoyed with someone it doesn't mean they're wrong and so don't jump to conclusions if if you find someone annoying if you find someone irritating you know particularly if they're important to you uh, maybe at some level they've got a point or maybe this is this is a situation where something has to be negotiated but in general with one-to-one -one relationships there is a bit of tension there is attraction there as well if it's you know if it's got any if it's a, 
if there's any sort of romantic nature to the relationship. Yeah, there's attraction, but there's also there's also repulsion at the same time about Venus square Mars, and uh, you know Venus. Your Venus is in Virgo. That represents you, and you do have quite quite a finely tuned sense of aesthetics, and it's just possible that someone you found fine yesterday for some some reason you just find them not so fine maybe i won't i don't like to use the word repulsive but someone is repulsing you someone who didn't used to repulse you perhaps now is repulsing you this may be just a passing phase though so um it may be nothing that you need to sort of worry about uh, this venus square mars is get, not going to last forever and in a few days time it it will be separating and uh you won't be um under its influence anymore of course if someone is still repulsing you in a few weeks time then uh that might be a cause for concern scorpio venus square mars i talked about venus square mars yesterday and i suppose i need to talk about venus Mar venus square mars again today because today is another day when venus is exactly square mars and so with venus exactly square mars uh, you may find that some people are irritating you, you don't like their approach they're interested in the wrong things as far as you're concerned you know you, as a scorpio you you have a sense that some things are important and some things are just completely trivial or i suppose one might see it as a difference between the sacred and the profane the sacred are things i suppose in the temple uh, which are of spiritual religious importance then the profane are things outside the temple that are just not of any great great importance but you just might find some people irritating because they're concerned about things that really frankly just don't bother you that they're not that you're not interested and it may be difficult not to show your irritation and i suppose this applies to sort of relationships in general uh, that uh, uh irritation is you know there is a real irritation under the surface and uh you you may want to take a step back. So if you find yourself getting irritated with a person, then don't continue. Uh, it may just be you. It may be nothing to do with them. And just by taking a step back and allowing, allowing the situation to perhaps uh, calm down, you know, that, that might be actually the best approach. Besides Scorpio, you don't necessarily want to spend all day worrying about other people, even if they're very close to you. There, you know, there are other things you perhaps want to do. You want to, uh, I don't know, sort things out. Um, perhaps there's a little bit of uh, uh, mess, garbage around you, things that are not properly organized and you're you're just very aware of it it might be getting you down a bit and you might feel that that's where your focus should be and indeed scorpio you're going to be able to move things very quickly if if things need to be cleaned up whether it's literally cleaned up or uh, things need to be cleaned up on your computer or in terms of accounting or whatever needs to be cleaned up you're going to be able to do it really quickly very suddenly you're just going to say this is it you're going to do it, it has to be a clean out right now it can't wait any longer and you might be so busy focusing on that that you really haven't got any time to worry about other people and whether or not you get on with them and there is a trine aspect between moon and mercury and i think this moon mercury trine is 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 really good it makes you super organized and it can make you super organized and if you're working or in terms of if you've got a business uh you, you will be very sharp 
and you will see what's you will see what's been going wrong in the past it'll be very clear to you and at the same time you'll be able to clear things up and so if you're working perhaps the emphasis should be on clearing pe things up and telling people what is wrong and not what needs to be sorted out it's not a matter for negotiation it, it just is obvious to you and you can just tell people and explain to someone what's wrong and you it's not it's not an emotional thing it's just you being very factual and i think you can be very factual and you can perceive things which in a lighter day are obvious but uh other people maybe haven't noticed them and you can bring them to their notice and i think they will very appreciate very much appreciate it so uh if you have a job and you're trying to impress employers or you have a business or perhaps you're trying to impress a clients for example uh then I think you can do very well and I think it's all about being able to notice things that other people haven't noticed and then being able to talk about them in a no nonsense kind of way. Sagittarius. S Sagittarius I think it's a day when you do feel a certain sense of movement. You can feel the movement. It's 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 all around you and you can very much be part of the movement and you have this uh sense of excitement about you you know when you're around people are interested and people really like being around you because you know life can be boring can't it and life can be a bit flat and it's like when you turn up things start to happen you know wherever you are you turn up and that's when the party starts that's when people feel right it's all it's all going sagittarius has turned up you know you've got this moon trying you know moon is in aries it's trying mercury in leo and so that the other part of that that, that trying the grand trine is of course sagittarius which is your sign so with moon and mercury trining sagittarius that's uh i would have said uh, really good for for creating action and of course excitement and it is excitement that in many ways really does matter and so there's no excuse for you to be bored and i think there's no excuse for other people to be bored around you but you can't spend all day worrying about other people or exciting other people or making people's lives interesting you do have your own things to do and if you are involved in anything remotely creative uh, then you can you can really do something quite unique it might actually be a little bit shocking in its own way and certainly if you're a sagittarian artist you you you, you perhaps have a chance to tune into something new and original and really quite surprising and of course that's important if you're an artist isn't it i mean it's so difficult to do th to be different you know everything has been done before nothing has been said that hasn't been said before um nothing is new under the sun all that kind of stuff but if it is possible at all to find something new under the sun then sagittarius if you're a sagittarian artist or creator then i think you can very much do it and don't be afraid of the impact you are having um you you can uh you can stand out yeah sure some people won't appreciate it you might be a little bit shocking but uh, so what uh, the key thing is that you are being yourself and today sagittarius you can be yourself and of course that is why people find you find you exciting and interesting there's so much sameness in society isn't there and so if you can be yourself you can be a unique individual a unique creative individual then people are going to appreciate it but it's it's to an extent one way flow it's you are presenting who you are to other people and they are excited by it it's not about you necessarily just listening to other people and adapting Ad adaptation is not a good idea i don't think you can't you can't compromise you can't really compromise your message today oh you can still 
understand people, you can understand how they could compromise your message. I think that is certainly something you have to do, you know, particularly with Venus square, with, you know, Venus square Jupiter, that there, there is going to be a little bit of pressure uh, in some quarters, perhaps some people who are less interesting than yourself. But I think that it's pressure that you can, you should have no problems resisting. Capricorn. Capricorn, you probably feel that your first priority is to yourself and to the people you really care about and everything else is fairly sort of subsidiary and I, I just don't think that you're going to be wanting to go out on a limb or going on adventures it's just not quite that kind of day and you know your you know saturn is your ruler saturn 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 as your ruler has been i suppose under a certain amount of pressure recently you know it's had that it's had a square to mars and it's uh, there's recently been a Jupiter square Saturn. In fact, that Jupiter square Saturn is still very much there, but it's it just feels like pressure that probably you don't need, and you may feel Capricorn that you just want to create the rules for yourself. And I think I think that's okay. And I'm I think also that you are going to be quite perceptive today. You're just going to understand what's happening around you. You're going to be able to understand your own feelings and where they are pushing you and where they, where they are taking you. And I, I don't think that you're going to be in a rush to do anything. A lot of other people are going to be in a rush. There's going to be a lot of rush around you, but I don't think there needs to be any rush exactly where you are and you know this means that if anyone wants to deal with you wants to approach you it has to be on your terms and i think that will be very clear everything has to happen on your terms so you're not going to move on someone else on on someone else's behalf they have to come to you and i think that is that's absolutely fine and it, it, it benefits everyone because, you know, you are strongest right now on home turf. So if you're on if you're strongest on home turf, then that's where you should stay. When I say home turf, I'm not necessarily just talking about you in your own physical home. It's your maybe your own home turf in terms of your in terms of what you know and your your comfort zone and perhaps where you're used to going, where you're used to being, places you feel comfortable um, intellectually, uh, emotionally, and, and yes, perhaps physically. So you need to be approached. Other people need to do the work. And it does seem that uh, I think that some people will want to approach you on home turf and try to sort of understand you and try to understand your viewpoint, because I do think that you've got a lot to offer especially when you are feeling comfortable when you are feeling comfortable then uh, then you're then you're really very strong and also very useful uh, you can be useful if anyone is prepared to make the effort to come around to your way of seeing things doing things on your terms when people start to come to do things on your terms um, they start to see the advantages and perhaps it's a day when it will be clear that you are right of course Capricorns are usually right but today I think you're going to be more right than usual and I think that, yeah people will understand that you are in the right and you know, as a result you can gain um, new respect Aquarius Aquarius, you have have got a lot to say for yourself, I think. 
I think yesterday you had quite a lot to say for yourself. But yesterday, yeah, you did have a lot to say, but there was a question of whether or not your words were hitting the mark. You know, you were trying, but it just didn't feel that you had a, had a ready audience. Um, it might have just felt yesterday that you were kind of spinning your wheels a bit. And so to, today things have, you know, things have changed a bit. And I think that there is more, there's more application today. I, it, you know, it's because, you know, the moon is in Aries, you know, which is from a, an Aquarian perspective, that is very communicative for you. And the moon is in Aries and it's making a trine to Mercury. Mercury is a communication planet. And so with moon trine Mercury, finally you're able to get your message across. Yeah, you can talk and now you're feeling, hold on, there's an audience. Finally, there's an audience. You get your audience, you've got your audience. And that is going to give you, I think, a certain amount of satisfaction. And also you can start to talk to people who you've never talked to before you know that's another thing that can be happening and you're also at the same time it's it's a great it's a great opportunity to to learn the facts i think you you have been thinking that some of the facts have been have been missing and now the facts are starting to become available and you know where to find them and so it's a question of considering who has the facts and how do you how do you squeeze these facts out and i think that's something you 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 very much can do so i'm hoping that by the end of the day you're going to be more knowledgeable than you were at the beginning of the day and so yeah there's a there's a lot to discover out there a, a lot of things that really could be i think extremely useful for you so uh that's that's something you can do and i i additionally i think with moon making a sextile to jupiter okay that moon sextile jupiter is more about the beginning of the day more perhaps if you're in east asia australia or new zealand but still i think you will feel the moon sextile jupiter moon sextile jupiter that does i think make you more fortunate than usual so things should just work out without necessarily needing much planning and a bit of spontaneity can help sometimes if you want to want spontaneity you 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 sorry if you want things to work you have to be ready to just do things just out of nowhere you know just perhaps surprise people it's something you you just think i've got to do this I don't know why, just got to do it. And you do it without any preparation. And all of a sudden it just, it just works out. So I'm thinking that, you know, overall Aquarius, it's, it's a day, at least in terms of your mind and communication, where things really start to start to move. And you are able to to communicate in a way that you just haven't been able to communicate before. And also some of the, some of the pressure is going to lift. You know, yesterday there was a quincunx aspect between the sun and Pluto. Now that quincunx aspect between the sun and Pluto is still there to some extent. And that, that sun quincunx Pluto may be about another person a person who just might be finding it a bit difficult to say what's on their mind. They seem to be holding something back. And this may be a person who is important to you in some way, or it may just be a group of people. Some people are just not quite being forthcoming. And you may just know that they there's something more that needs to be said. And it may be that there's even something about you that is preventing them from saying whatever they're thinking. So, yes, you yourself are good at talking, getting your message across, but other people, maybe not so much. 
and that could be frustrating and it's a situation where you can't force it if you start to think that someone is holding something back is not revealing it then perhaps you need to be patient or you perhaps have to find the right way of getting in touch with them and you know they are listening to you though don't worry I mean, just because someone is not um, talking very much or seems to be holding back doesn't mean to say that you're not having an influence. You are having an influence, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, but, but we're talking about not everyone. We're talking about certain key individuals perhaps in your life who you just, just may feel that uh, there's something they're waiting to say, but they're not ready to say it yet. And maybe that's something you just have to respect. Pisces, Pisces, you are feeling that you may be, you know, things are going on. You can see that things are going on. But Pisces, do you really want to be part of it? I think you feel that you really don't want to be part of it. Um, it's just, I suppose, a little bit too exhausting and you you've already given it your best shot and really do you want to do you want to work any more at it maybe you just need a break maybe it's friday maybe it's it's time for your weekend to start at least that might be your view though it does seem that you can't entirely detach yourself from the world out there you know venus is square mars that venus square mars probably does have an impact on you you know venus is in virgo venus is in your opposite sign and i suppose mars may represent your your defensiveness you know with mars in gemini pisces you have at some level been quite protective about who you are and you may have felt that just there has been some things you don't want to reveal and you don't want to talk about. And if anyone gets too close, you, your defense systems start get, start going up. But Venus square Mars may be about your defense systems being tested, feeling that someone is there and they're wanting your attention and you don't really want to give them your attention. And it may just feel a bit difficult. I mean, you, you kind of want to... Um, be in your own private world at the moment and having to address something someone out there uh, may, may may just not be what you want to do but perhaps you have to work out what's happening I think that just because someone is annoying they seem to be pushing your boundaries a little it doesn't mean to say that you should have nothing to do with them at least you should uh discover what they want now i i should say something about money uh, I'm, I'm often a bit wary about talking about money because I, I do understand that money is not important to everyone and that money seems uh somewhat uh base doesn't it uh not very spiritual but yeah you know, money often is important you know as an astrologer when you when i consider what people ask about you know, they sure they ask about love and they ask about career but they do ask about money they do it does happen it's quite it's quite a big priority for for many people and so today pisces if appropriate apologies if money is not an issue for you but money could be important and i th i mean that in a good sense I think that in terms of money, you will have a good sense of how to use money, uh, how money needs to be watched, how money needs to, you, how you need to cope with money, and you know also uh, perhaps how to make money. Uh, you'll certainly have ideas, and I also think you're going to be relatively lucky with money. I mean, don't push it, but in terms of money you just you seem to have a good sense of course many Pisceans are actually good with money okay some Pisceans can be totally chaotic and they can just spend money and it all goes away and it's a complete disaster but but there are other Pisceans who are just very very perceptive um, 
you know, I, I don't know. Super rich Piscians, who comes to mind? Well, the only super rich Piscian I can think of is um, is Rupert Murdoch. I mean, he's 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 just got married again, hasn't he? So. I I remember there was this cartoon with Rupert Murdoch and it was this wheel it was with the astro- with an astrologer there was it was Rupert Murdoch and an, talking to an astrologer in this cartoon and there was this wheel with 12 segments of this segments of this of the the sign the wheel divided up into the 12 signs and every single sign had a fish on it and the astrologer said to Murdoch something like your sign is in the ascendancy again. And so, yes, M- Rupert Murdoch is an example of a successful Pisces who understands money. And I suppose he can feel what's changing in the world. I suppose with Rupert Murdoch, he understood what was changing in, in terms of media and the changes of technology in terms of newspaper production. And I suppose that was a lot to do with lot of what was going on, I think, in the late 70s and early 80s and how he shook up the British newspaper industry. I'm rambling, aren't I? Sorry. Uh, what I really wanted to talk about was um, was Pisces and money. And I was thinking that with the moon in, with the moon in Aries, sextile Jupiter, trine Mercury, sextile Mars you'll be very good at looking after your own financial interests and you'll be very protective of these interests. And I think you're just going to have ideas. If you, if that's important to you, you'll have ideas for making money, doing clever stuff with money. Now, I'm not giving financial advice here. You have to make sure you're not doing anything stupid. But uh, I think your, your financial, you have good financial creativity and at the same time, good financial discipline, I think. Uh, you will understand what's what's important um, money wise but of course money may not be important to you in which case i'm sorry for this diversion and that's it that's all i'm going to say about the 12 signs for today and i'm now going to look at today from the perspective of the i ching so i asked the question uh, what is friday going to be like for those watching the i ching section of this video and the first hexagram I got was hexagram number 26, the taming power of the great. Now, this hexagram does not have any moving lines, so it doesn't move to another hexagram. So when we've got this situation, when we've got a hexagram that is locked, that may indicate that today perhaps not much is going on doesn't move there's no action so that is a possibility and the taming power of a great is has got if you like two components here you've got the taming and then you've got the power of the great so what does the power of the great mean i think that means our power it, it means that we do have a lot of power and you know, we may be kind of like an animal that has this power and we feel that we are ready to actually use this power and we're, we're just ready to go. But then we have this other concept, the taming. This power does have to be tamed. You know, we, we might have lots of things we want to do, but we just can't just move forward off our, you know, off our own bat without, without sort of, um, w- without thinking it through, and we need to be tamed. So it's this, so the real concept is, what does that taming mean? Now, taming might actually come from a higher authority, and this taming might actually be in terms of harnessing and. So if we are, for example, in a job where we are under someone, under whatever, a manager or employer or whatever, the I Ching would say that their influence on us is good, that they are allowing us to perhaps channel, uh, channel our energy in a way that is 
fortuitous um, and that we can really focus on I suppose making an employer happy doing what's doing what's right and we'll yeah we'll we'll certainly do a, we'll certainly do a good job and that is that is one approach and in, in fact the the sort of employment concept is important because it says it's you know it says it talks about eat without sowing what does it mean to eat without sowing we don't actually have to, you know normally i suppose you have to sow seeds they grow and you eat the product but here you can eat without sowing so there is this possibility here that we can benefit from some higher force and that might be uh, that might be a job so if for example for example if you are looking for a job with the taming power of the grape and that, okay it's today I, I understand it's a friday and it's it's a tall order to find a job if you're looking for a job to find a job on friday but uh, i think that if you're looking for a job you can make good progress or looking for a contract or whatever because that's the concept of eat without sowing you don't have to find your own money someone else is prepared to give you the money and the resources you need to eat so that's why the Wilhelm translation says that it's it says that it's favorable to eat away from home eating away from home means you know we we don't have to provide our own food someone else can provide our food for us and I suppose if you're hungry you're literally hungry and you, you you're looking for your next meal eating from away from home you're going to find some someone's going to provide you with that meal um, so that's that's a way of looking at the taming power of a great an alternative view is to consider it from a perspective of the past and what can tame us we can actually be tamed by our own past so you know, we all have a tradition we all have things we learnt about in terms of the family or how our family brought us up what we learnt about in, over our life it, these lessons are there, but perhaps we've forgotten them. These traditions are there also. And the taming power of a great means that if we remember our past and we accord with our past, we can be tamed by the past and we can benefit by being tamed by the past. Now, this hexagram, although it doesn't move, there is a nuclear hexagram. And that's when we take the, we knock off the top and the bottom lines. And so we make the second, third and the fourth line the bottom line and then we make the third fourth and the fifth line the top line and so that can give us a nuclear the nuclear hexagram of the marrying maiden now what the marrying maiden means in this case is about appropriate behavior remember I Ching has a very Confucian approach the marrying maiden if, if if a young woman wants to marry she needs to be very discreet and low profile and the steps to finding the husband you know she has to behave and she's a woman and all this kind of stuff remember this is confucian a confucian way of looking at it and so underlying the taming power of a great is this hexagram the marrying maiden and it's talking about appropriate behavior we don't have to rush into things we don't have to be inappropriately bold uh, we can actually benefit by putting ourselves under some kind of superior force and that might be an employer it it might be someone buying us a meal or it might be just the whole weight of our past and what previous generations have told the last generation and what that generation is informing us and we can be tamed by actually who we are in terms of the past. So I know all this sounds a bit vague uh, with this hexagram. So I suppose you have to sort of listen to it and sort of take from it what is appropriate to you. Uh, but, uh, you know, overall, uh, it's, it's not dramatic because it's not moving, no moving lines. But I think it's kind of uh, quite grounding and I think, it's it's not a, it's not a bad hexagram so turning to the astrology and i want to look at the venus mars square 
So today there is a square between Venus and Mars, and I just wanted to consider what does it mean, Venus square Mars? Uh, how how do how do we appropriate how do we how do we consider it? Um, so. So as we know, this yeah, this today you know today we've got Venus in Virgo, square Mars in Gemini, and you know it, when I've gone through the twelve signs, I've tried to sort of explain perhaps how we might experience this Venus Mars square. But you know what about if we have it in our chart? So Venus Mars can be an a, an aspect a, a, an aspect related to relationships. Venus and Mars are two relationship planets mars is a planet is a, is a planet of male sexuality it's about if you like the dynamic side of a relationship the, the masculine side venus is a planet of female sexuality it's supposedly you know the more sort of receptive side the the, the more aesthetic side of it and so whenever you've got venus mars aspects in a chart you you, you always have to think about what that says about about relationships you know in in astrology of course people are always asking about relationships and they always have done you know you go back to the 17th century william lilly a lot of his clients were women women wanting to know whether they're going to be able to marry a particular man a common common thing that people are asking about in any chart where people are asking about relationships, always look at Venus and Mars. Always look at the Venus-Mars midpoint. Uh, what is on the Venus-Mars midpoint? Um, Jupiter on the Venus-Mars midpoint is very different from Saturn on the Venus-Mars midpoint. So that is something that one always needs to look at. And if you've got Venus square Mars, the very fact that they're square each other, the, sorry, the very fact that they're in aspect, a hard aspect, does indicate the possibility of some kind of attraction that there is maybe some kind of sexual dynamism which can be presented to a wider you know a, a, a wider audience to society at large now it tends to be a specific kind of sexual dynamism you know if you think if you think of I suppose the 20th century, I know things change, um, but uh, if you think of the, the supposed number one sex icon of the 20th century, I, I'm fairly confident that Mar it's Marilyn Monroe, even though she's been dead for a very long time. I mean, she died in August 1962, a few months after I was born, but people haven't forgotten Marilyn Monroe. And Marilyn Monroe had this sort of universal... Um, attraction in some areas in some uh and she you know I, I, you know apparently when she walked into a room she had an immediate impact and uh whatever you think of her she had something uh she, you, you can't help that and she had no aspects between venus and mars as far as i, as I think she didn't have a venus mars square she didn't have a venus mars conjunction opposition no but you see, she was a universal sex symbol. If she'd had a Venus Mars square, she would have failed. She couldn't have been Marilyn Monroe because Venus Mars square is specific. And it, it's about attraction and repulsion. If she'd had a Venus Mars square, some people might have thought she was great, but other people would have been repulsed by her. It wouldn't have worked. She would not have been a universal sex symbol where people haven't still haven't forgotten her over 60 years after she was after her death. So... It is specific, and uh, yes, it is charismatic, but it is perhaps only charismatic amongst a certain audience. Not everyone likes Venus Square Mars. And yes, it, 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 it can be super attractive uh, in the right situation. And so Venus and Mars is, is, it is a difficult aspect. It can be a difficult aspect because it can actually be about someone who finds it difficult to get on with people. Venus square Mars. There's always aggravation. There's always, there's always tension. And yeah, it might be compulsion. I mean, I suppose the worst possible thing that could happen, 
I mean, I suppose in terms of synastry, if one person's Venus is exactly square another person's Mars, they might be a compulsive attraction to, to so so compulsive they get married and then they realize they can't stand each other. So you know that's another way in which how in which Venus square Mars um, could work. That's in terms of synastry. So what I wanted to do now is I wanted to look at examples of people who do have or did have Venus square Mars and to consider what impact it might have. As usual, this is a, a totally um, biased sample just in terms of people I find interesting. Uh, it, 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 it is not, um, a rep it's not a representative sample of the general population of people who have Venus square Mars. Let's uh, start off with someone who, as far as I know, uses the or used the Venus Mars square very well and that was the chat show host Dick Cavett and his videos you know videos are all over YouTube of him interviewing people through the 60s and he would interview people like you know Janis Joplin and uh, lots of famous actors and personalities and he has Venus square Mars. So Venus in Capricorn, square Mars in Libra. Now, you would have thought that uh, to be a chat, ho chat show host, you know, you have to get people to, I suppose, relax. And if you look at his videos, you know, he let people talk and people seem to trust him. And his... His his interviews of Janis Joplin seem to be particularly impressive, and he seems to uh, really get people to open up. And he has Venus square Mars, and so maybe in this case it's not working so badly. You know, he has perhaps he has Venus in Capricorn. I think this is the right time of birth, so he has Venus rising. So Venus rising is uh, it's quite good if you want to be a chat show host. Having Venus rising is going to be really useful and it's Venus in Capricorn so it's not like Venus in Sagittarius it kind of perhaps puts people at their ease with Venus in Capricorn and yeah it's uh, square Mars so that could be a bit difficult but you could say Mars is in Libra so maybe that's not a bad sign for a chat show host perhaps that's where the sign matters Mars you put your energy into Lib you know that's one way of looking at how Mars works. What do you put your energy into? If Mars is in Libra, you put your energy into being with people, connecting with people. And I think throughout his life, he was. He, I think he's he's still alive. He was always really interested in the theatre and theatre people, and uh, it's his world. And so. Perhaps it's an example of Venus Mars, Venus square Mars having charisma, having attractiveness, people like him. And so in this case, he was able to use the square energy quite well. I mean, pretty well. I mean, as, you know, he's generally regarded to have been a, a very successful chat show host, host sort of old school. You're letting the other person do the talking, not interfering with what they say, not interrupting. Of course, maybe nowadays when everything is fast forward, super fast, but you couldn't do that anymore. But I just wanted to make it clear this is an example of Venus Mars apparently working quite well. I don't know anything about his private life, but in terms of um, how he appears on his on his TV shows or how he used to appear on his TV shows, the Venus was Venus Square Mars is uh, yeah is working really well. Another person with Venus Square Mars is uh, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton has Venus Square Mars. Uh, is Does it say something about her attraction? Well, obviously Bill Clinton at one stage must have found her attractive. Um, I mean, he married her and... His Mar she has her, his she has his Mars in Leo because Clinton is a Leo. Uh, Bill Clinton is a Leo. Mars. It's not just Venus square Mars. It's um, Mars conjunct Pluto. And 
Venus, so she's, she's, she's got Venus square Mars, Venus square Pluto. This is a very intense and very focused. And Venus in Scorpio is absolutely clear what Venus in Scorpio wants. And Venus square, and there you've got your Venus square Mars. But the problem with Venus square Mars is that, uh, I mean, some people think she's great, I suppose. But she's also uh, hated by a lot of people in America. Uh, she's almost regarded as the epitome of evil. I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even think that's an exaggeration. Venus square Mars. So, Venus square Mars, in terms of how she communicates, how she relates, she has a very strong impression. Um, and some people like her, some people can't stand her. And that might be the problem of having Venus square Mars. And that Mars conjunct Pluto on the IC, you know, it's also very defensive. So, so and that Venus, Venus in Scorpio can square that Mars-Pluto conjunction. And um, uh, I suppose, you know, all these stories about her screaming at Bill, was it during the, in the governor's mansion in, was it in, where's the place called, in Arkansas when he was governor about, you know, when he was up to his usual stuff and uh, Hillary not appreciating it and uh, and the drama there. But it's kind of amazing, Venus and Venus Mars Square, they are both in fixed signs. In spite of everything, they're still married. You could say it's a very successful marriage. I, I mean, still after everything, she's stuck with it. She has, in a way, st stood by her man. You could say um, no divorces here, there, um, in in spite of uh, really being pushed to the limit and beyond. I mean, how did she relate to the whole Monica Lewinsky thing? Uh, but uh, I do think her Venus Mars square works well. And perhaps Venus Square Mars, you can imagine she decided at one some stage that she was going to perhaps get Bill Clinton. You know, when she met him, she found him wonderful, perhaps. He hit her Venus Mars Square, perhaps because his son was on her, on her Mars in Leo. And she wasn't going to let go of him, perhaps. And yeah, they are still married. So I would have said that Venus Mars Square may have been useful in many respects. I mean... Whatever you think of her, she's done very well. Uh, she has a certain charisma, but it's a charisma that is very, it's very focused. Um, it's, it's, um, it's very concentrated. And Venus Mars square, yes, it can be attractive and a woman who is, was known to be att attractive, but perhaps damaged was the actress Vivian Lee. Uh, so Vivian Lee, of course, was um, she made her name with Gone of the Wind and she married uh, Laurence Olivier and there were affairs all over the place. And she I think she got an Oscar for was it for being, you know, for Streetcar. Was it Blanche Dubois in Streetcar Named Desire? And she she has venus square mars and uh, she's got venus in libra square mars mars in cancer so you can see venus square mars makes her attractive makes her a helps make her a successful actress and at the same time it's a square it's 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 a little bit messed up and it, she certainly had serious uh, mental health issues as she particularly as she got older i mean i think particularly after the streetcar named desire i think she even started to identify with blanche dubois isn't that right and she died young but that venus square mars could be a problem so venus in libra might be perhaps looking for some kind of relationship but so with venus square mars it can be very disruptive in terms of relationships because you know mars is square venus and so mars is causing a disruption there it's making it difficult for her to find the right relationship so that might might be you know she 
her her first husband she had a first husband and she married i think in the 30s and then she started having an affair with Laurence olivier and then they got married and then they he, she started having other affairs and he started having other affairs it was all a big mess and that might be that's uh venus that's venus square mars um again, again like dick cabot she's not someone i know very much about now venus square mars we saw with Hillary Clinton that Venus Square Mars can perhaps be useful in terms of a political career, attracting a certain constituency, but not attracting everyone. So Turkish President um, Recep, uh, Recep Erdogan, uh, I'm sure I've totally mispronounced that. So he was born in uh, February 26, 1954. And you can see that... that uh, Erdogan has a wide Venus square Mars. You can see he's got Venus in Pisces, square Mars in Sagittarius. So he's got actually got a conjunct. It's his Mars is exactly square. His a Venus Mercury conjunction. So Venus in Pisces. I know he has a very bad reputation in the West um, as being some kind of strong man, uh, not quite a dictator, but uh, he has Venus in Pisces. So that does give him a certain a charisma. Whatever you think of him, he has a charisma. He is able to appeal to a certain constituency in Turkey, and that must have helped him in terms of building up his political career. I think he was mayor of Istanbul before he became Turkish president. And so there is, there's that Venus in Pisces. And then that square Mars. There is an attraction there to Venus square Mars. But again, I'm sure some people in Turkey find him absolutely repulsive. But enough people in Turkey think he's absolutely wonderful to keep voting him in as as president. So it depends. And I think, you know, there is a sort of Hillary side thing. Again, she almost became president. In fact, in terms of, in terms of the popular vote, she... Um, she won the popular vote in 2016, but it wasn't enough because of the Electoral College. But uh, Venus, Venus Square Mars with Erdogan, it again supports the idea that certain people do find her attractive. So, sorry, find Erdogan attractive and are prepared to vote for him. And Venus Square Mars can also be a, be a disruptor and can say things which uh, can appear to be disruptive and so trump's vice presidential pick jd vance whose chart we've been looking at quite a lot recently he has venus square mars and his venus square mars is it's it's strong it's angular he's got venus rising and he's got mars on the ic so we saw that with, when we looked at the chart of dick cavett he had venus rising in capricorn um I don't think J.D. Vance is as as easygoing as Dick Cavett. Uh, that's, he has Venus square Mars in Scorpio, so a very strong Mars in Scorpio. And uh, he is disruptive. And he says things, that, you know, which upset people. Uh, you know, like, you know, for example, his his comment about the Democrats being led by by whatever single women who are you know, they're cat women uh, hit that that remark so it can be a bit tactless and abrasive and i think the abrasiveness of jd vance is certainly there but also the attractiveness and he's another person who who uh some people think he's great and some people hate him and that's venus square mars as they say perhaps might say in as they might, people might say in in the UK when they talk about people who are either liked or hated. He's a kind of a marmite person. I don't know. Is marmite a thing in America? I don't think it is. It's this uh, thing you spread on bread that you either like it or hate it. Uh, it's got a very distinct taste. So yes, so Venus Square Mars might be the marmite aspect, and you know the Democrats. Are trying to, of course, give the impression that everyone hates him, but he's a terrible pick. I'm not actually convinced about that. Uh, I think that that Venus Square Mars is actually very strong. And 
in certain quarters, yeah, he is an attractive person and those on the right are very much attracted to him. And he has a natural facility with communication. I mean, he is a, he's a good communicator. Uh, again, like with Dick Cavett, had Venus Rising, Square Mars, a good communicator, a different kind of communicator. Dick Cavett's Venus was in Capricorn, that's in a more low profile. This Venus is in, a, in Aries, which is, which is more abrupt and self-focused, all about him. I don't think J.D. Vance would be a good interviewer because, you know, he might find it difficult to be, to, to keep himself from centre stage with Leo rising and Venus conjunct the ascendant. So uh, that's uh, J.D. Vance, another politician who some people like, who is capable of being very disruptive in America is Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, I, I, I know that she has quite a colourful private life as well, but I didn't look it up. But she, just uh, looking at her chart, she has Venus square Mars, and she is a disruptor. She, by her interventions in the Senate, you know, wearing MAGA hats in the wrong places, in well, in inappropriate places, and you know, interfering in people's speeches and being very up front about her opinions so that is venus square mars and i suppose she's got venus in aries um she, you notice how she's got it's not just venus square mars she's got venus opposition uranus square mars and so she certainly is able to attract people in that political kind of way um in a sense that she was able to get a seat in uh, a seat in congress that that's no mean feat uh, but she is a disruptor, and I think, and I think you can see the fact that she's a disruptor from by the fact that she's got Venus square Mars opposition Uranus. Now, so far, I haven't really talked about the the sexuality, particularly of Venus square Mars. So I just wanted to turn some people turn to some people with Venus square Mars who are known for their sexuality, where their sexuality is is quite a big part of who they are and or perhaps how their sexuality has tripped them up now someone in the news a lot recently maybe not in the mainstream media but a commenter on the war in ukraine is scott ritter so scott ritter was a um united nations weapons inspector he has a clear view on Ukraine. He believes that uh, um, Ukraine is going to lose. <laughs> he has absolutely no sympathy for Ukraine. He, and he takes a view that Ukraine is basically a Nazi, uh, it's basically ri riven with Nazism. And he's interviewed pretty much every day. And he was a United Nations weapons inspector. He, as far as in 2000. I think in 2003, he said basically said that Iraq didn't have weapons of mass destruction and he wasn't believed. But Scott Ritter has a weakness and his credibility has been undermined by his conviction. Uh, he's, he got convicted for uh, um, being in contact with I think police officers claiming to one police officer was claiming to be a 16 year old girl and there were other stings and there are other aspects of his sexual behavior and what he was doing on on the phone and it's all it's all there it's sort of in um in wikipedia i'm, not, I'm absolutely not going to go into details about it and of course just because you have convictions for these kind of crime i mean i don't know i'm not going to say what is a serious crime i don't know but uh, but just because you have these convictions doesn't mean to say that uh, your overall message is wrong it shouldn't doesn't really affect him but it is of course, of course has been used to undermine his credibility and there is an argument perhaps that these stings against him were politically motivated i don't know but Scott Ritter does have Venus square Mars and his Venus square Mars has clearly got him into trouble. And 
there is his Chiron opposition Mars square Venus. So his Venus Mars square is linked up with Chiron. It's also linked up with Pluto. And he does have a sort of a, apparently he wasn't helped when he was um, in on trial for one of these crimes because he ref I think he refused to plea deal because he was so clear that his view of what happened was right and that the other that the prosecution's view was wrong and but I suppose Venus square Mars is also his persistent he's not very good at making friends at least in terms of the establishment he t didn't tell people what they wanted to hear that Iraq didn't have weapons of mass destruction he didn't, doesn't doesn't tell people what they want to hear um when uh, in terms of what's happening in the, in the war in Ukraine, or indeed he's very critical about Israel and what Israel is doing in Gaza. And so that may be part of his Venus square Mars, but in his case, I wouldn't think one could say that Venus square Mars was a vulnerability. So perhaps if you've, if you've got someone who is doing something worthwhile and valuable, but they have this Venus square Mars and you can't really work out how it's working. Yeah, it could represent some other side of their personality that eventually comes out, perhaps when it's under pressure. I think he said, suggested he might have been depressed at the time of one of these episodes. Um, so that's that can be what Venus Mars is, some kind of, and it is a very close Venus Mars square, and it, it can just be an issue that when someone is under pressure starts to starts to reveal itself a person who is very much associated with sexuality is um, is alista crowley so here's a chart of alista crowley born october the 12 1875 and alista crowley was a major figure on the occult scene uh, he um, one of the most important occultists of recent times and he has had a dramatic cultural impact when people were talking about they had this poll about the greatest Britons uh, ever you know he was up there he was in the top hundred so a lot of people in a lot of people in the UK and around the world know about Alistair Crowley and he's ha he continues to have a powerful influence. And, you know, one of the things that he's most famous for or infamous for was his concept of sex magic, look, looking about sex and magic and uh, the idea that there should be no constraints. You know, he sort of talked about pansexuality. I suppose that means having sex with everything and that was part of what he was saying and a lot of his rituals were to do with sex and he had all sorts of views about women and you know it's generally viewed that he was a major misogynist but it's more complicated than that and you have to you know in one sense he idolized women in his work but uh, at the same time he just treated them as second-class citizens and yes he had Venus square Mars um, and Venus Square Mars was just an integral part of of his work and his reputation, and he was attractive, according to him. I mean, he 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 didn't just he wrote this autobiography, but he didn't call it an autobiography. He called it an auto hagiography, um, and and in his auto hagiography, as he called it, a hagiography is of course a book which is about the life of saints. And so in his autohagiography, I think it was that, he sort of describes how he saw one, some random woman and he just stared at her and she just immediately came his way and then they both of them disappeared in his, into his room or his apartment for a few days and didn't come out for three days. That's his claim. So he claimed to have extraordinary attractiveness. I suppose at some level he must have had extraordinary attractiveness, but he has Venus square Mars. Venus square Mars is going to be attractive to some people. Some people absolutely cannot stand him and continue not to be able to stand him. He gets strong reaction even now. You mentioned Alistair Crowley's name and people just, even now people just clam up and they say, no, 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 I can't deal with that. I remember I was, um, I mentioned Alistair Crowley's name to some God, I was a bit, 
God, I, I was, it was 1980 and it was a neighbor of my parents and he was some elderly lawyer, solicitor. And I mentioned Alistair Crowley's name and uh, he immediately clammed up. He said, this is bad. because the reason being he was into mountaineering and there was a mountaineering accident in um, in the Himalayas where where he Crowley didn't do anything. He didn't help anyone. He said there was no point. And a lot of, in the mountaineering community, a lot of people haven't forgotten that Crowley was an accomplished mountaineer. And you still got, got a strong, you get a strong reaction. Um, I mentioned Alistair Crowley. I, I, I've, I've only once been the best man at someone's wedding and I mentioned Alistair Crowley. Uh, I was suggesting that uh, the person I was talking to might have an interest in Alistair Crowley. Got a very strong reaction there. And so you can, you see that uh, his reach goes beyond the grave. And some people like him, some people don't like him, but uh, I think we can see the sexuality of Venus Square Mars. And one other thing about Venus, about um, his Venus, he has Venus opposition Chiron. And Wilhelm Reich had Venus opposition Chiron. You know, Wilhelm Reich, the the psychotherapist, the, the um, psychoanalyst, uh, disciple of Freud, who had strong ideas about sexuality and psycho and and psychology. Uh, which in our, you know, you know he, remember it was Wilhelm Reich wrote that book. What was it? The function of the orgasm. And so we have Alistair Crowley again, who wrote who. Well, I wrote lots of stuff about sex magic, and Alistair Crowley had Venus opposition, um, Venus opposition Chiron, and so Venus opposition Chiron. That could be if you take Chiron as a maverick, having ideas about sex and magic and sexuality and how people should be treated and pansexuality and everything else. So there is Venus square Mars with Alistair Crowley. Joe Orton, I've looked at. Joe Orton's chart several times. Uh, Joe Orton, British playwright, he had he had this uh, gay relationship with uh, Keith Keith Halliwell, and Keith Halliwell got jealous and and killed him. And Joe Orton is famous for his diaries, and Joe Orton wrote these diaries about his sexual exploits and. Um, the sexual exploits, you know, were incredibly sordid at times. You know, what he was doing in public lavatories and who he was meeting in public lavatories. And uh, I think what he was doing when he went, of course, when he went to Morocco, they always liked to go to Morocco at that time in the 60s. And um, uh, underage male prostitutes, you know. It, 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 so we get... We get uh, um, we get a sense there of sex, you know, perhaps a focus on sexuality. Joe Orton had an extreme focus on sexuality, and uh, and it it was, it was certainly part of his work, but it was certainly a major part of his private life. And it was his diaries and his his description of his sexuality that got him killed, and. In a suicide note, because Keith Halliwell bashed him over the head, and then Keith Halliwell, I think, took barbiturate, so it was a murder suicide. And in the suicide note, Keith Halliwell said it was the diaries, uh, particularly the bit at the end, or words to that effect. And so, his, you know, his sexuality was just a very much an important part of his life, of Joe Orton's life. And okay, it may have been very creative, um, in terms of. Uh, Helping him write some, write his play. You know, some his play. His plays are really. <laughs> I really enjoy his plays, um, and you know, you can see some of them on on YouTube. And but it, but it is it is a good example of Venus Venus Square Mars working. And while we're on the subject, to continue on the subject of sexuality, we have the Marquis de Sade, <laughs> the Marquis de Sade. Again, known for his sexuality, known for what he wrote about his sexuality and writing about his sexual fantasies. And, you know, of course, it, the word sadist comes from Marquis de Sade. Um, 
I mean, I don't think he was actually that much of a sadist by modern st- by any standards. I think it was more about his more about his fantasies uh, rather than what he actually did. But but still, he has he has uh, Venus Venus square Mars. You see, versus Mars in Aries and Venus in Cancer. So uh, so. Venus, Venus, so Venus square Mars, I suppose you might say, I don't like to use the word, but you might say it's some kind of perversion or a kink or an emphasis on sexuality. And it's perhaps not a very natural emphasis. It's a tension there with Venus square Mars that somehow needs some kind of outlet and a relief. And that outlet may sometimes be be quite uh, destructive. And that's it. That's all I'm going to say about Venus Square Mars. Um, I I hope you found that uh, of some interest. Just remember that it is an extreme example. If you've got Venus Square Mars, I'm, I'm sure it's not working out like this. But it's it's just the charts that I happen to have, which have Venus Square Mars, which where I have something to something to talk about. Okay, so um, thank you very much for listening. If you enjoyed this video, I'd be very grateful if you were to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, uh, and I would also like it, I would like it if you were to like it. So if you were to like this video, yeah, I would be super grateful. And yeah, again, must emphasize, if you're not subscribed, I really, really would be happy if you were to subscribe because it really doesn't cost you anything. And if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. So thanks again for listening and I will talk to you again tomorrow.